tracking. So most of the dogs, all the dogs that we have here are retrievers. And we need to remember the idea about retrievers is for them the, the value is the retrieve, right? Um, so we're gonna kind of ask them to do something that's a little bit different, but how are we gonna get them to add value to the idea of deer scent? We'll use um, blood trail scent in the stick and in the liquid and tennis balls. So we'll run through those nose work drills and that gives them the idea to go that this smell equals a retrieve. Boy, this smell is really good and I have to remember that. So we'll use this stuff on tennis balls. We also use these big bumpers with the, with the, no, with the hide on it, real hide. And then we'll add scent to these as well and we'll drag these. Now, um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ways to train a dog to track. For me, it boils down to what gets Fee the reward. And for her, so we're gonna attach this scent to a good retrieve. So I'm gonna take our, our bumper with the hide on it. And our tracking lead. And we're gonna put, put some scent on. Let's do grizzly first. So for this, another thing, I guess the tools, um, a lot of times I use a harness when I'm tracking. And the reason is I want, I don't want him pulling at his neck as we're going along. I want him to be able to breathe. So if he's gonna pull it all, I want him to use his shoulders. I don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt his ability uh, to breathe and use the nose that he's got. I get asked the question all the time, is it hard to train your dogs to track? And if it is, what's the hardest part about it? Well, the easy answer is no, it's not really that difficult. Dogs track, have a tendency to track naturally. The thing that I've found that's hardest about tra the training process is getting the stuff I need at certain times of the year. What we did was we put the real hide together along with the blood trail scent, all the clips, all the drags, all the stuff I need to get these pups started. And maybe the most important part of this kit is we put an information book in. I wrote it myself. It's gonna walk you through all the steps that we take for training our dogs to track and find wounded deer. It has everything you need to get your dog started and finished out as good game recovery dogs. So I'm gonna let him get a little sniff of this and, you're, and what Caleb's gonna do is he's gonna hold Grizz there and then I'm gonna drag this away. Yep, you're gonna hold him here. And once I get to my spot, give him his hunt, hunt command, let him hunt up the line. Now you don't have to be right with him. You can let him get out a little bit and we're gonna let him pile into this. We're gonna come to him, we're gonna have a party. Okay. What do you think of that big boy? Good dog. Oh yeah, got some fur, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Good boy, good boy. What do you got? What do you got? Good boy. Good dog. Good. Good dog. Come here, come here, come here. There we go. Dead. 
Nice. Sit. Sit. Good, so now what we did there is we put him right back on the same spot and while he was going the other way, Grizz didn't see, we made that line longer and I left the bumper there. So what we're gonna see is if he really is using his nose, if he'll follow that line up or just come to us. Now if he breaks off and comes to us, it's not a big deal. We're just gonna stop him, know him, and come back to the line and put him on hunt command and let him hunt up and find that. Good. Good. Tell him he's good. 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 Good dog. Good dog. Good. Good boy. Really good. He thought about it. That was that was really good. He got to the end and he went, Whoa, what the hell? It was right here. What do I gotta do to find this thing? I know I'll use my nose. Yeah. I'm hunting dog. Good boy. This is a lot of fun. It sure is nice I got to got to find this thing. Then when we do find a real deer, they tend to get a chunk of the lungs or heart or liver or whatever, and they that's that's their own. Um, so remember that adding value to this scent um, with retrieves, find a drill, stuff like that. And then we're gonna transition to the idea of stacking wins and making things a little bit harder incrementally. As you set up your training in the future, it's crucial to think about the scenario. Every day the wind is different. Every hour, typically, either the thermals change or the wind changes depending where you're at down even to the, the smallest degrees of barometric pressure. So high pressure days and low pressure days, the scent is gonna work different. And we have to remember with these dogs as well that they're air centers. They're not like a, a field bred dachshund where they're real low to the ground and they're tracking ground scent. These guys are gonna be up. So what'll happen a lot of times is fee will be almost dead on 10 yards downwind of the track. She knows exactly where it's at. She'll start, she'll quarter and cast, find the center, find the edges and get right to where her, her spot is and run that track right there. So when you're looking for confirmation, it may not be directly under her nose. Remember to look up wind, take into account for the thermals, all that sort of stuff. Also, when we're training for this, make sure you train at the time you're gonna be tracking. Well, why are you gonna run your track at midnight? When do we get a lot of calls for tracking deer? It's after, right after the hunt, right at dark, we're gonna give the deer several hours to expire and then go out and track it. A lot of times we can't leave them overnight where we're at because of predators will get to them. So it's, it's a kind of a real hard push and pull, when to go, when to not, do you leave it all the way till morning or not. We'll lay, the, lay a scent trail and have them run it and incrementally we make that, that delay longer and longer and longer, two hours, four hours, 10 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours. But remember to start with the end in mind. Think about all the different things that you're gonna have to track through. Um, a big thing for us that I, I love training for, not only is going over rivers, so the wind changes at rivers, but also I'll track intentionally over active four-wheeler trails. So when the dog is working that, they get to that four-wheeler trail that's maybe been run over five or six times in two different directions, it plays hell with the scent. So that gives me an opportunity to watch how she acts, to learn when she's having a hard time and when she's struggling, where's her head at? Where's her tail at? 
What is the leash doing? All these things so I can help her out if I have to help her out. And by helping her out, all I really mean is either coming back to uh, confirmation where I knew she was on and restarting her, which, which happens, it's not a big deal. I, I practice that even when I know she's on so that if, if I make a mistake later on on a real track, she's on, I pull her off, I'm happy to restart her and go. Um, I'll do the same thing at rivers. You know, I'll take her across the river in the wrong spot and have her work that bank up and down and tell me where I went across before and have her continue the track from there. So make sure you run through all these different things, right?